and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for the return of Orzov Trollbringer. I said return, I guess we tried an Abzan Trollbringer deck before. But this donation deck is an Orzov one where we're going to be playing our uh, main combo here of Hushbringer. Two mana, one two, flying lifelink. Creatures entering the battlefield or dying don't cause abilities to trigger. So that with Clackbridge Troll. A five mana, eight eight, trample haste. Whenever it enters, you create three goats. But Hushbringer says no abilities trigger when you enter, so no goats. But then it also has at the beginning of combat at your turn, they may sacrifice a creature. If they do, you tap it, you gain three life, and you draw a card. So basically, you want to make it more difficult for them to sacrifice creatures to be able to tap your Clackbridge Troll. Because an 8-8 Trample Haste for 5 mana is an incredibly good rate. And, and so if they don't have any goats to sacrifice, if they want to stop from dying, they're going to have to sacrifice their normal creatures. Um, so that's basically the combo of the deck. And we have the Hushbringers in here. If they kill our Hushbringer, then we have Soren to bring it back, or Order of Midnight to bring it back. Uh, try to get it in play, slam the Clackbridge Troll. And so on. We also have backup plan uh, for Hushbringer. We have two Ethereal Absolutions. Give our opponent's creatures minus one, minus one, so that whenever Clackbridge Troll enters and creates some goats, they just die on the spot. Besides that, we just got good Orzov spells. You know, Murderous Rider is an awesome one. Um, just Giant Killer is very good. Same with Knight of the Ebon Legion. And then some good removal. Mortify, Legion's End, Othakaya, Despark. That's our deck. Uh, sideboard, or sorry, uh, mana base pretty basic. We got a couple of each castle. Uh, should be pretty good mana. And then we got a lot of different removal spells, depending on what our opponent's playing. So we can uh, kind of turn into more of a controlling deck after sideboard. All right, so we're going to be playing this deck through a league. We're going to be playing it until we win five or lose two, whichever happens first. And let's hopefully troll some people. <laughs> uh dang how how's it going for you zach zach um no i don't johnny's pride mate's probably still not even that good even though we do have different things that gain life thanks Melata. We're going to need to draw three lands. That's a lot of lands. That's a lot of lands. All right, charging up the lands. It's pretty cool. This is like an Orzov symbol inside of an Orzov symbol. You know, like it's like the outside, like the gold is like the Orzov symbol, but then the black part on the inside is the Orzov symbol as well. That's really cool. No, I don't think Aerialist would probably be too great either. Same kind of thing. Well, we honestly could not have two worse draw steps. If I took the, the two worst cards to draw back to back. Yeah, those are the good old days, right? Whenever trolls had to regenerate. Why don't they just sack their Cauldron Familiar, kill my Knight of the Ebon Legion attack? Like, what are they doing? Yeah. 
Yep, looks like we lose. All right, so Legion's End, Kaya, Disenchant. And trim two Sorn and a Troll, just kind of trim some of the top end. Um, I think I want to cut either a Giant Killer or a Knight of the Oven Legion for the last card to cut. We'll go with the knight. Wow. We could really not get any worse of hands than what we've gotten. Doesn't seem like we have any lands in here. So I didn't want to use Disenchant on the Witch's Oven right away because I needed to be able to like I think that killing Trail of Crumbs is the most important thing. Now that we have a Mortify, we do have removal for Trail of Crumbs still. So we could probably Disenchant the Oven. But if they... We may play Corvold here, and that would be really, really bad for us. Yeah, I still wanted, instead of going Disenchant <clears throat> into Legion's End, I wanted to hold up removal. In case of Corvold. Huh. All right, you know what? I'm, I'm going to use this. I do like saving Legion's End for a Cauldron Familiar, too. Well, that's unfortunate. <clears throat> that's a better card to Oath of Kaya. I kind of wanted to get it down to kind of protect Arkaya a little bit. What a Sheila! 
All right. This when all right. So one problem. I'm actually going to be out of town on Wednesday. All right. What what do they got in here? So Lieutenant Dan may take a little bit. So Moldrotha Burn. Okay. Yeah, I was looking at your Yeah, okay. The the Moldrotha Burn deck? Okay. What do they got? Murderous Rider. Okay, so they have nothing. Okay, so yeah, Lieutenant Dan. So I'm, I'm not going to be here Wednesday, uh, the 8th through the 11th. I'm going to be traveling. <clears throat> so is there is there another day like tomorrow? I can play it tomorrow. Blight, Ble Blight Beetle is in their main deck. Why am I even? Why am I Legion's ending this thing? I have, I have Castle Ardenville. What am I doing? That's just a waste. That's not not a good use of Legion's end whatsoever. All right, tomorrow's fine too. Okay, perfect. All right, uh, let's see. Did you have a, a slot that you wanted? Okay, you said any deck slot is fine. Is there a slot for tomorrow that works better for you? Remember, look at that Muldratha Burn from uh, Patreon, I think. All right, so Battle of the Castles. They get extra cards. I get one ones. Either way, they're losing life. That didn't seem like the best use of the auto tap function. First slot? All right. So yes, yeah, so this deck's a little different. It's got some Jun to Sacrifice elements, but it doesn't. it's definitely not just a stock Jun Sacrifice list. Yeah, we got to do some cool stuff with the Simic Ramp deck. I recommend going back and watching that one. We had some really fun games there. I lead the Golgari now. Step aside, or be everyone is expendable. Four, three. Land. Come on, land. Ugh. Nobody's got no lands. I'm gonna make you 
suffer. Okay, just want to draw this land, get Ethereal Absolution in play, make, you know, destroy the Paradise Druid, turn the Bone Crusher into a 3-2, the Murderous Rider into a 1-2, and then I have a couple of 2-2 two -two creatures. I guess, I guess that's a card. So they got a protection from blue and a protection from green card. I'm a black white duck. <clears throat> I should absolutely be sacrificing the Paradise Druid. Yeah, all we did game one was play two lands. And then this game two, we had to mold a five. If we didn't, we could have had all these awesome spells in hand also. No, I, I don't think my opponent missed lethal there. I don't think they have enough damage. I wish I could attack this Vraska. This Vraska is going to be difficult to beat. It's not often I'm outmaneuvered. Absolution's kind of keeping us in this. Kind of. It's not too much because of... It's time to step out of the shadow. Because of the castle. On their side.
Okay. Hey, Pablo. Alright, let's try to curve out a little better. Keep seven cards, play some spells. Let's try to do that. All right, we got five lands. That's awesome. And we have our two namesake cards. That is also awesome. But we're on the draw against Mono Red, who has multiple one drops. That is not awesome. At least it wasn't light at the stage. I wanted to just play Murderous Rider, like as just like the creature, not the swift end. So presumably they want to play these Scorch Bitters so they don't lose them. Which means that like we're kind of safe here playing this they can't attack. Man, this would be great to draw an extra land and then draw one more land and then draw Ethereal Absolution. That would be a great... There's the land. Come on, Ethereal Absolution. There's still there's still a little bit of mana away from a Torbrand. Uh, yes. Playlist. That is not... Yeah, that was the worst card for me to possibly see. That could just be 10 right there. Like, just with triggers. Yeah. Cavalcade was the, the card I didn't want them to see. Torbrand wasn't scary because they were a ways away from him. Go lethal.
All right, let's try this. Yeah, Order of Midnight's not doing any blocking for us. Soren's only good if we're attacking, but can be very good. I didn't realize there's more goat tokens than you said. Good hand if we get lands. So they didn't get to play a one drop to start attacking me already. Because of that. I wait a turn. Didn't slow him down too much, though. <laughs> Keep drawing lands. No. Not a land. You keep drawing lands. Torbrand and Gingerbrood don't work so well together. Hey, good job, Thunderwonk. Good job. Why can't we just draw lands? Nice to be able to mortify that and have a knight of the Evan Legion in play to block. Okay, two more lands. Finally got the fourth one. Two more. Their hand was really incredible. It really was. But we can just draw two lands. Let's draw one land here. Ugh.
Little temple scrying us to try to get to another one. You had to say something, Wonder Monk. You had to say, opponent's lands aren't rares. You had to say something. Give him a rare land. Could never get six mana. But that was an awesome that was a really good curve. You know, like if you, you saw like if every single turn they got to use like all of their mana, lots and lots of one drops. That was just really nice. Well, cause the other the other that creature that can be unblockable, the one that I exiled. We can at least block the first strikers. We can't block that that other thing. Ginger Brute's unblockable. Alright, so it didn't work. Um It's kind of the tough thing of playing like a, a mid range deck like this where you have no card draw. You just are at the mercy of your draws and you just and especially playing no card draw with, you know, playing, you know, some more expensive cards. Um, Absolution would have been amazing if we could have got there, but it's just basically the problem with Hushbringer. Hushbringer means you don't get to play card draw because the the deck that, or the card that this kind of deck needs, like you need you need Midnight Reapers because you need card draw, and Midnight Reaper is just an incredibly incredible card. It's so good, but Midnight Reapers don't trigger when you have Hushbringer, and it's just really the cost of playing Hushbringer. This is the same problem that we ran into the last time whenever we played Abzan with this. You know, we tried Abzan, we tried the uh, some more adventure cards, like the adventure package with Edgewall Innkeeper, tried that for its card draw. Um, but it, having no card draw is is pretty difficult. Um, we have Kaya's Wraths in the side, you know, we have them in the sideboard. We, you know, we brought in Kaya's Wraths. I think we're I think we're normally going to be pretty good against aggro. I think my opponent had, especially after sideboarding, I think my opponent had a really really solid hand, and we were just stuck on land at three lands for a really long time, which made everything really awkward. And that's that combination is why we lost. Um, but no, Hushbringer is not that great. It, you know, it's the combo with with the Clackbridge Troll. It's hard to pull off. Um, I did really like Hushbringer in the. Remember whenever we had the the, the Boros Aggro deck that we've played some. I really like Hushbringer there because of Tajik. Tajik mentoring onto the Hushbringer, letting it be more aggressive, like growing it to be not just a one-two. But. Um, the, this deck has 25 lands. So there, there's 25 lands. You have the temple. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's just kind of how, how magic goes. No, we have not been lucky with Orzhov decks recently. No, we have been losing with lots and lots of different Orzhov decks recently. But Ab we've been doing really great with Abzan decks. But not really with Orzhov decks. Um, and also all the all the Orzhov decks, I guess that we did lose with none of them had. Yeah, all the Orzhov decks we've been losing with none of them have been Midnight Reaper decks. The Abzad de decks that we were winning with were Midnight Reaper decks. There is certainly some causation there. Feels like if you want to be playing black mid range, this is the card that enables it. What's up, Ian Ray? Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. But 
Um, but yeah, there we go. Not uh, not the best league, but that's okay. We learned some stuff. With Orzov Doom discard. Yeah, we we didn't do well with Doom decks recently. That's the thing. But Doom decks do have, uh, you know, a whole lot of things that draw cards. But Abzan is black-white like this, but with green added. Yeah, Midnight Reaper is, is so clutch with Soren. Yep, Soren bringing it back and everything. <clears throat> um, there's no early game removal. That's that's exactly what like Legion's End and Othakaya. These are these are early game removal spells. I mean, even murder like there's nothing wrong with using Murder's Rider or, or Mortify on three. The late game like we have Giant Killer and Dispark. We have four late game removal spells, but most of our removal is early. I mean, I I guess. All right, but anyway, there we go. There's uh, Orzov Trollbringer. So those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and of course, leave those comments. Um, but thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.